Hi everyone! Today we'll be looking at one of Friedrich Nietzsche's books on the advantage and disadvantage of history for life. Nietzsche, if you remember, was a German philosopher whose relativistic views formed an important precursor to the postmodern movement. You might know him for being the one to make the statement, God is dead, for his views on the will to power and master-slave morality, and his conception of the Übermensch, also known as the Overman, or Superman, an original inspiration for Superman, Superman. Without further ado, on the advantage and disadvantage of history for life. Or, as I like to think about it, how does history help us live? To start off with, Nietzsche contrasts humans and animals as historical and unhistorical beings. Animals are unhistorical in the sense that they live in the moment and aren't concerned about the past. In contrast, humans often find that our past haunts our present. Think about it. Our waking thoughts are usually about things which have occurred or things to come. Our individual and group identities are based upon what we perceive to be our history. We usually make decisions based on past events. The past is something that we drag along with us. In Nietzsche's eyes, this can get a little dangerous. He talks about the uber-historic, or super-historical perspective, where an acute knowledge of history can work against us. Someone who has carefully studied the twists and turns of history might realize that the great deeds of the past came about by accident and no longer wish to continue contributing to a legacy that was founded in pure chance. Alternately, some might realize that history is cyclical and tends to repeat itself and become cynical and weary. What can the next 10 years bring that has not come before? The danger of history is something which Nietzsche expresses as Fiat veritas, periat vita. Let there be truth, and may life perish. Our contemporary society tends to take the opposite view. We equate more knowledge with technological improvement, scientific breakthroughs, and better standards of living. Yet Nietzsche looks beyond this to make the argument that knowledge is not always a good thing. Sometimes it's better to not know the truth, and sometimes the truth can actually inhibit our growth. You might get the feeling that Nietzsche views the unhistorical animal's life as the more carefree one. He does state that we desire the happiness of the animal, but not on their terms. In other words, we long for the bliss of an unhistorical life, but we don't want to discard our history, our memories, our consciousness of the past, and basically, we don't want to become animals. Yet, at the same time, we can't be completely historical creatures either. We need a bit of this unhistorical attitude in order to move on with our lives and not get bogged down by the past. As manifested in man, this ability to use history as fuel for growth, but not get overwhelmed by it, is what Nietzsche terms plastic power, the power to recover and repair. As with the historical and unhistorical, plastic power is all about balance. Too much of it, and you get a person without a conscience. If we were all able to shake it off and move on without any trouble, you can imagine how we'd recover too easily from past mistakes and not learn anything from what has happened. On the other hand, too little plastic power, and you get someone who is easily hurt and who has trouble letting go and moving on. I think everyone at some point has had the experience of doing or saying something which we later regret and then not being able to get that out of our minds. This is an example of having too little plastic power, and the result is that we might end up avoiding certain things out of fear of making the past repeat itself. Thus, in Nietzsche's eyes, we are really looking for a happy medium, which he would term the powerful, read, healthy, human. Using the unhistorical and the historical as a foundation, this person will be able to take control of and use the past to serve his current life, but also forget about what he couldn't master. Forget at the right time, remember at the right time. Either extreme is not healthy at all. On its own, history can quickly burgeon out of control, consuming our present and slowing down our growth. Nietzsche writes that history conceived as pure knowledge, once it becomes sovereign, would be a kind of conclusion to living, and a final reckoning for humanity. Yet, it's important to remember that Nietzsche isn't saying do away with history and knowledge and frolic amongst the animals. 
As in most of his books, an underlying theme is the importance of preserving life. In this one, how both the presence and the absence of history can make us stronger human beings. In part two of this video series, we'll explore the specific ways in which Nietzsche argues we relate to history, monumental, antiquarian, and critical. In the end, historical knowledge should not be a guiding force, but a tool in order to reach an ultimate goal. Only when historical culture is ruled and led by a higher force does it bring with it a powerful new stream of life, something healthy with future promise.